Boy, I pulled into this yard this afternoon and there is a different feel about the bees. Um, these bees are busy. This yard is extremely busy, but it's a different type of busy. So far, the bees have been out and kind of searching for food, you know, focusing around the supplement feeders. Just a constant in-yard search kind of busy. Right now, the yard's busy, but it's kind of out and up and then down and in. So the bees have found natural pollen and they're just going crazy. There is streams of pollen coming into these hives right now. These trees have bloomed all through the valley, all along the escarpment, all across the countryside. The landscape has come into the poplar trees have bloomed and these bees are growing absolutely bonkers, flying out and bringing in this rich nutrition. So the busy is up and out instead of, you know, down here. And it's just a terrific feeling in this yard, full of energy, full of life. I just love it. It's about that time of year. This is, this is a, we've turned the corner, that fresh stuff's coming in. These nests are gonna just explode in development. So this afternoon, I'm just making my rounds. Um, I like to, on the weekends, I like to go around, see my hives, to see what's going on inside, help determine what's going on outside, just to help me build a better plan of, of work ahead. I have university students coming onto the staff next week. They just finished their, uh, their exams and they're keen on making some money, so they wanna start work early next week, which is great because we have a ton of stuff we gotta do. One of those things that we have to do is focus on mite treatment. As a beekeeper, there's three things we gotta focus on, the basics. I always think of my basics as being three priorities. That's my job, is uh, nutrition, queens, and disease control. Right now is the time we gotta focus on mite control. We have to control these mites as they develop their nests. Um, so the population, the mite population doesn't get too big and out of control throughout the honey production period and then cause severe problems later on in the fall. So my period of time to control mites is now. I make these videos as if I'm speaking to myself 15 years ago. Okay, so I am talking directly to myself 15 years ago on everything that I should have been or wanted to know at that time. This is one of those times I wish I could have heard myself 15 years in advance. Just the importance on mite control. A lot of commercial beekeepers will put a lot of criticism towards hobby type beekeepers on just the uh, just their philosophy around disease and disease control and such. And I completely agree with that. As a beekeeper, regardless of how many hives we have, we have to focus on our hive husbandry, just as if we were looking after any other animal. We have to make sure these animals, these bees are disease free and healthy. And it's really important that we focus on that because as these hives fall to sickness, just the very natural act of bees themselves will come in and rob out all these resources and then hitchhike the disease from this hive back into that other hive that has robbed out these resources. It's just a tremendous factor of disease spread that we have to consider. But my message isn't quite to the hobby beekeepers. There's a lot of hobby beekeepers out there, but they don't own a lot of the hives within the countryside. My message is to the beekeeper who's growing his operation, just like I was, who's expanding their yards, just like I was, whose ambition is to become a commercial beekeeper, just like I was, but the beekeeper who, as he's expanding and growing, his livelihood isn't solely based on these hives. He's got a secondary job, just like I did. I consider the rest of my farm as my secondary job. So your time, your focus of the husbandry towards these hives is stretched. You're tired because you got a job, you're busy all day, uh, you have a family, kids, you have personal life, all these things going on exhaust you. And then you have to consider about looking after these colonies afterwards. So my message to the beekeeper who's expanding his operations, his ambition is to become that commercial beekeeper, 
is you got to look after the basics. You got to look after the nutrition. You got to look after your queens. You got to look after your workload, but you got to look after your disease. And you got to make disease your top priority. I get a lot of questions on asking me, okay, what do I have to do as a beekeeper to build to expand my operations to become a commercial operator? I had the same questions back when I was expanding. I was looking for that insight of that commercial beekeeper. Priority number one, disease control. If you can't keep the husbandry up in your, within your hives, they're gonna die. And then you're back down to square one. You gotta look after disease. You gotta keep on top of the disease. Number one, if you're gonna become, if you're aspiring to become a commercial beekeeper, act like a commercial beekeeper and control your disease. It's not as big as an issue for a commercial beekeeper, um, basically because we're directing all of our attention towards these hives. We're making all hours of the day uh, directing our attention to these hives. We have workers. We can throw a worker in and you can do a bunch of sampling just to get an assessment on what's going on within our colony so then we can make better decisions as we, as we manage our hives. So I just want to show you how I monitor my hives for mites. I'm going to show you the proper way to do it, but then I'm also going to show you how I do it. I kind of bend the rules just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to talk about what mite treatments to use. Talk your, to your provincial apiarist, your state apiarist. They will help guide you through all these treatment options and then you can figure that out for yourself. It's their job, so you make sure to bug them. They'll give you good solid sound advice. I'm not going to give you that. I'm just going to show you basically how I manage my monitoring of these hives to know what's going on inside. And once you have this information, then you can take it to your state or provincial apiarist and then they can help you walk through all the different options according to your mite infestation. So basically what I'm doing is I want to take a sampling from either random hives throughout the apiary per, on an individual basis or what I do is I just go through my whole apiary and I take a random sample um, a random composite sample. So what you need is some rubbing alcohol. You need some kind of a container to be able to hold your bees and wash the mites off the bees. Um, there's a whole bunch of different cups and containers you can use. But I've been using this one. You, you fill it up full of alcohol. It has a little screen in here. You put the bees. You take your sample of bees. You put it inside and you just kind of wash off the mites. Kind of like that. Properly take a sample within your hive. What you want to do is you want to get down into the nest. You want to take a sample of the bees around the brood laying area because that's basically where the, uh, the mites are going to be focused. So I forgot my smoker here. Let's see how the bees... The bees should be in pretty good mood today. All the pollen coming in. Just digging into basically finding the brood. I'm going to go to the outside of the brood nest. Pull up a frame. And I'm just going to do a quick look for the queen. So I'm seeing open brood, I'm seeing eggs, and I'm not seeing any queen. I'm just going to scoop right off the face of the hive, of the frame, Right over top of the brood, I'm going to take a scoop of bees like that. frame of honey. Look at the fresh pollen coming in. They're bringing in loads of this stuff. That is ex extremely encouraging to see. So I'm just going to dig into the brood nest. That's reading his patty nice. Oh, 
but look at that brood nest. That is absolutely brilliant. These guys are off to the races. So what I'm looking for here in a good brood nest. So what I'm looking for here is solid brood, rimmed with pollen, rimmed with either nectar or syrup that I've provided for them. That is one healthy looking frame. Love it. And this side too, just solid brood, pollen, honey. That is a really nice frame of brood. So I'm going to take a sample from these guys. I've looked for the queen, I can't find her, so I'm just taking a sample off the face of the brood nest. Just like that. Okay, I'll go around to, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 hives, just depending on how big the yard is. If I have a yard of 40, I'll pick like six or whatever. And I'll just basically just, you know, you just shake it around. And what we're doing is we're just trying to, the alcohol is going to dislodge the mite that's on the bee, and it's just going to fall down to the bottom. And basically, what is it, a third of a cup or something like that, it's 100 bees. This is just a real basic field test. So you're going to shake this down. Then you look around at the bottom to see if there's any mites that dislodged. I'm not finding any. Just kind of a field sample like this. This gives you a quick idea of your mite infestation. Later on in the day, you can bring these samples back to the honey house and do a real thorough shake wash. Uh, you know, shake them for about a minute, maybe two minutes. Um, really, you know, get those mites dislodged onto the bottom. If you want to get really technical, you can count the bees. Uh, you can weigh out 100 bees and then you can weigh your sample to see how many mites that you washed off per sample. You're looking for mites per 100 bees. And in the spring, what we're looking for is a threshold around the 1%. If you have 1% or more mites in your wash, you've got to seriously consider uh, employing some kind of a treatment to knock those mites off to get those counts down. Uh, Got to keep it under 1% for sure. So that's one technique of uh, sampling bees, but I cheat a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily go right down into my brood nest all the time. I employ uh, a little bit of a quicker method of um, sampling my, my hives. And what I do is I have this, I call it a bee sucker, it's just a dirt devil, that's all it is, with a coffee container, an instant coffee container, screws onto the bottom. So this thing will suck up the bees and then direct it down into my container here. And I'll go around and I'll pick out, you know, a random sampling of hives, just like I did here. But I'll tip that colony back and there's no mites in that. I'll tip my colony back and I'll just suck the bees off the bottom of the of the cluster and I'll suck them as close as I can to where that brood nest is. And what I'm hoping is that I'm getting close enough to that cluster that I'm getting a good representation on the mites on those bees. It's not going to be as exact and precise as taking it right off the frame, right off the face of the frame. That's where you got to take those samples to get a real accurate test. But I find that our intentions are good in this business and we we intend to you know be perfect beekeepers and managers but we always run out of time and we never get around to doing these types of things so i find by implementing a little bit of a an easier system of taking those samples you know you get done your work in the yard you're like oh shit i forgot my sample so you just grab this thing tip back you know six or eight hives you got yourself a pretty good sampling of what's going on within those hives and I figure that a close to perfect sampling is better than no sampling at all. So I'll just show you what I'm doing. I'll pick a random sampling of hives here. Basically what I'll do is I just tip them back. Hopefully they're not too cranky here. 
And here I have the big mass of bees. So I'm anticipating the cluster is right in the center there. So I'll just take... I take my sample right as close to the center where I anticipate that brood's gonna be. I'm assuming that the queen will not be at the bottom there. I'm assuming that the bees are close enough to that cluster that I'm getting a good representation of the number of mites on those bees within this colony. And I'm able to go through the whole apiary and just pick, 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 take my sampling and get a pretty good representation on how many mites are within my colonies. I'll also argue that whichever way you decide to take your sampling of mites, whichever way you decide to establish that metric within your apiary, it's, as long as it's consistent from time and time and time after again, where you can establish those baselines and establish that predictability of those numbers, that's the important part, is the consistency between how you implement your, uh, your monitoring system. So that's how I do it. I will go through and this, I run through a whole bunch of random hives, I take random samples, I get a pretty good idea what's going on. If I start finding that I'm having high mite counts, I need a little more, I need to double check myself, I'll go and I'll start scooping it right off the frame um, and compare it to what's going on here. And just to make sure, just to double check uh, what's going on within my colonies. So then what I do is I take my, uh, my sample dump it into my washer. Wash, 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 wash. You wanna do this for about a minute, two minutes. Don't get too carried away with it. And then you look underneath for mites. And I'm not seeing any. What I'll do is I'll take my sample here it away and I'll take it back to my uh, my desk. I'll take it back to my microscope and I'll do just a quick examination for Nozema. And there we go. So that's just a little bit of insight on how I monitor my mites uh, within my apiary. I find it extremely important that beekeepers continually do this to, so they know the level of mite infection within their colonies. It is probably one of the most important things that an aspiring beekeeper do is monitor the mite infestation within your colonies. It's the number one disease problem in our apiaries. And if we can relieve our, our hives with high mite loads, we can practically address all the viral issues that are associated with bees. Uh, we can, you know, go a long ways in helping these hives um, manage any type of nosema infection. So. Keeping on top of our mites is extremely important. Monitor your hives, uh, go see some professional help, get some advice on treatment options, and keep these hives healthy and moving forward. It's full of pollen. So that uh, sample come back with two infected out of ten. So very mild. Found two nosemas in that one, but uh, I'll call that a clean bill of health.